Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tuesday CT. I'm Kristen from Magoosh, and today we are talking about graphs of trigonometric functions. Now, what I'm going to do here might be a little sacrilegious to a lot of math teachers out here who work really, really hard to teach you why all of this stuff is the way that it is, but this is just going to be a quick and dirty rundown of the bare minimum that you need to know for the ACT to be able to get some of these questions that sometimes appear on, for example, graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. So we're just going to do this, so if you are taking the ACT later this week or tomorrow, um, or it's been a while since you've taken trig, this should hopefully just give you a little bit of a refresher so that you can answer these questions on the test or at least eliminate some incorrect answers. So the two big things that you really need to know for the ACT are basically what do sine, cosine, and tangent graphs look like and how to do basic transformations with sine and cosine graphs or not even how to do them, how to recognize what would happen if the equation changes a little bit. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's talk about what they look like first. All right, so here, are graphs of sine of x and cosine of x. So sine and cosine look like waves. Basically what's happening here, I'm not going to get into too many details about it, but it's actually pretty neat and fascinating and can help you remember why this is the way it is, if you remember where it comes from. This is the unit circle, which you may remember from trick class, being unwound along a coordinate plane. So our y values are on our y axis, and this is our angle measure in radians. And so this is a circle that is unwound. And if you remember from trig class, the whole circle has two pi radians to go all the way around. And so that is why sine and cosine both have a period of two pi. And the reason that sine starts here at the origin, at zero, is because on the unit circle, that sine of x when is zero degrees, or zero radians, I should say, the y coordinate there is zero, and for cosine, the y coordinate at that point is one. So if you remember that from your unit circle, that might help you remember which graph is which, but you can also just maybe use a mnemonic. It's alphabetical order from the top down, so C is above S. So if you just need to remember which one starts up at the one and which one starts at zero, C over S, cosine over sine, and then they both look the same. They're just starting at different points. All right, this is what a trig, I mean, sorry, what a tangent looks like. A tangent graph looks like, it's like this. I'm not gonna talk too much about this because for the purposes of the ACT, you pretty much just need to recognize the tangent function graph. And we're gonna go back to sine and cosine and talk about basic transformations. Let's talk about changes in amplitude first. Okay, so I'm giving you a couple sample equations here, y equals two sine of x and y equals one half sine of x. So our basic equation, or basic function, which would be sine of x, what happens if we change or put a number in front of it. So if the number is greater than one, like two for example, that increases the amplitude of the function, which means it increases how tall the wave peaks are. And if it's less than one, it decreases the amplitude. So here is an example of that. You can figure this out here. So the black line here is sine of x. Two sine of x or any number greater than one is going to make it taller, and if it is less than one, it is going to make it shorter. Now let's talk about period, which is the other big transformation that you need to know for the ACT. So this is what happens when we put a number in front of the x here, or so the number, the implied number there would always be one if it was just sine of x. So this is the, if you remember the equation for, for, these, uh, for these graphs or for waves, this is b, and our period is 2 pi over b. So if there's nothing there, it's really an implicit 1, right? So our period would be 2 pi over 1. So you remember that? Sine and cosine, they have a period of 2 pi if it's just sine of x or cosine of x. So if we change that, then this is our b value. So if it's y equals sine of 2x, then we would have we would put the two in here, and so our period would be pi. And so it decreases the period. So amplitude is usually easier to remember because you think, oh, two x, that's gonna be bigger. One half x is gonna be smaller. This is the opposite, perhaps, of what you would expect, and so that's why I put this here so you know why. So if it was, if we put a one half here, or a number smaller than one, 
one half here, we would have 2 pi over 1 half, which should actually be 4 pi. So that's why it increases the period. And this is basically what that looks like. Black line here is sine of x and 2 of x. It's going faster. It's completing the cycle faster and repeating faster. And sine of 1 half x would be doing it slower, increasing the period. And sine of 2x would decrease the period. And again, it could be sine of 3x, 4x. 5x, 6x, same thing. Just greater than 1 would decrease the period and less than 1 would increase the period. So that's the basics of what you need to know for the most part in the ACT. You're going to be given graphs maybe and you need to recognize which is which and you can use these basic little quick tidbits of knowledge to help you make some eliminations and narrow things down and you should be good to go on pretty much any trig graph that is thrown at you if you have these few basic elements straight. So there's a lot more on trig if you really want to dig into all the reasons why this is the case that it is, which I highly suggest you do. You can find our lessons for the ACT for math and every other subject at act.magoosh.com and I will be right back here next week on Tuesday CT with some more tips for the ACT.